Hi, I'm Roger, and I'm going to talk to you about the lesson that you're going to observe today. Um, I am a huge proponent of the 5e learning cycle uh, in science classrooms. I've been using this model of instruction since the day I graduated from college in 1996 because it's really effective. So today, you are going to observe uh, the explore stage of a learning cycle and part of the explain stage. Um, the, the explore stage that I'm using incorporates the use of a lab that I call osmosis in eggs. So eggs are a great model for cells, and when the shell has been removed, they um, have a semi-permeable membrane, membrane. So students are going to be working uh, over the next three days to do different parts of, of this lab in which they begin to engage with the phenomena of cell transport. So this is part of a larger unit on cell transport, and these experiences in the lab, watching and observing and measuring what happens to these eggs as they're placed in different types of environments, will help the kids construct understanding of how cells behave when placed in particular environments. Um, so on day one, we'll begin um, you know, taking initial observations and placing the egg into um, a hypertonic solution, which the kids don't know that term yet. Um, but after each part of the lab, kids also begin working on the explain stage of the lesson, which in this case is a pogel. I love pogels as explain portions of learning cycles. Uh, because number one, they have the kids doing the explaining as opposed to me lecturing or something like that. So uh, this is where kids start to use the phenomena I learned in lab as an anchor to understanding um, more details about terminology that we use in, in each of these scenarios. So during the explain stage of the lesson, they'll learn things like what a hypertonic solution is or what an isotonic solution. They'll learn about how cells can become crenated or plasmalized. Um, overall, they start to be able to make predictions about how cells will behave when found in different environments. And that's the goal, right? To, to help them construct their own understanding. Now, um, we have one camera in our district uh, that is really good. It's a still image photography camera that also takes fantastic videos, way better than my really old iPhone. And I've been trying to use that camera, but for two of my three lessons, it has shut down smack dab in the middle of the lesson. So um, it is what it is. Uh, we thought we had it fixed, um, but hopefully you, you've got enough evidence from what I've submitted that you'll be able to get a good sense for who I am as an educator. Thank you so much for the time that you're taking to review my application, and I look forward to hearing back from the committee. Take care. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, today we're going to be working through um, a three-day investigation and um, I want you to just kind of take a look at the roadmap to begin with. It includes um, an investigation called osmosis in eggs and your egg will serve as a model for how cells behave. At the same time, um, I'm going to run a, a pogo lesson with you and the, the pogo lesson is supporting what you're observing in the, the, the investigation. Um, so we're going to start today. I got a short story to tell you. We're going to do our investigation. So that includes you coming up with a hypothesis if you haven't done that already. Um, I want you to record initial observations. That includes right quantitative data. What's our mass? What's our circumference? As well as uh, qualitative data. What does the egg look like? Give me some observations of what it, what it looks like in uh, the beginning. Once you roll from lab to your pogo, I only want you doing the first model. When you get to the stop sign, well actually when you get to the first, the end of the first model, work on the stop sign work. Okay, the stop sign in that pogo is further along, um, but we're going to stop at that first model. Um, that means, do you have your diffusion handout finished? And if you do, there's a second um, enrichment handout that I want you to do called facilitated diffusion. It's sitting here, and you don't need to grab it until you get to that point, okay? Um, so uh, in my family, we celebrate Christmas like many of you do, and um, every year there seems to be a hot item that's hard to find around the holidays for gifts. To show you how old I am, in my year of birth, which of course I was unaware of Christmas at that time, the hot item was a Nerf ball. So toys have come a long way since 1971. But fast forward to 2006 when my children were excited about Christmas and the hot item that year was a Nintendo Wii. How many of you still have a Wii around the house, right? Do you still play with it occasionally? 
yeah, yeah, they're fun. You, you could not find these that Christmas. So the, the toy was released, the system was released in November, and by the time Christmas rolled around, there were none to be found. So fast forward about two weeks in January of 2007, and in Sacramento, California, there was a radio station that got their hands on a Nintendo Wii. And they decided to have a contest, an on-air contest. So they, would you mind uh, pulling the door shut for me? They, um, they invited 17 to 20 contestants into the radio station. And the name of the contest was Hold Your Wii for a Week. Um, so they gave these people every uh, 15 minutes, they gave them 240 milliliters of water and said if you can hold your Wii, right, not go to the bathroom, longer than everybody else, you can take home the game system. During the contest, a nurse actually called in and said, what you're doing is dangerous. And they laughed at her, and they said, well, they've signed waivers. Well, later, when they went back and looked at the waivers, because you know something's coming, um, the waivers had nothing to do about medical risks. It was all about like property rights, intellectual property rights. Um, so there was a woman named Jennifer Strange. At the end of the contest, she was feeling quite strange. On her way home, she called her friend and said, I, I didn't win. Um, I almost did, but I just couldn't last any longer. I have a headache, and I'm going to go home and take a nap, but I feel like crap. Um, mind you, in the studio, the DJs were making fun of how distended everybody's bellies were at the end of this competition. So she laid down. Her friend was really worried about her and called her mom, and her mom went over to check on her. And when her mom went into the, her home, she found Jennifer had died from drinking too much water. And it was a tragic thing, and it's something that was totally preventable with some basic biology knowledge. I want you to remember the story, and two days when we're done with all of our investigations, we're gonna circle back to that, and I want a really good explanation for why that woman died. Um, but she did, and it was, it was something that was publicized, and apparently some people have heard about it last period, one of my students, like, a light bulb went on when I was explaining it to them. So, we will circle back to that. Right now, um, we're gonna get ready for our lab. Okay, some lab safety things, there's not a whole lot to worry about safety-wise, but we are dealing with raw eggs. So I am going to have the person who's handling the egg and doing like the circumference measurement and the mass measurement. When you come to get the egg, you're going to grab a pair of gloves. They're nitrile gloves, and they're over there by the eggs. Um, kind of look at my hands. I'm a medium. If your hands are much bigger, you'll go large. If your hands are smaller, just grab a small. Um, take your measurements, and then when you're done taking all this baseline data, it won't take you that long. Um, clean your desk up with the, the cleaning solution, and then jump into that pole goal, okay? Be sure to assign reader, recorder, manager, and re uh, reporter before you start. Um, again, when you roll to the end of that, you'll work on your stop sign work, and then we'll all come back together at the end to digest this a little bit and, and hash it out. Um, so, take your belongings and throw them underneath your table. Keep out your lab, and I'll bring by the pole goal in a little bit. Select one person to come to me and get the egg, and maybe somebody else will go grab some paper I'll be the first to right? You got the egg. I got the egg. I'll go up. Okay. You got the egg. Grab your glove. Grab your glove. Grab your glove. Grab your glove. Large, medium, or small. And then when you're done, grab a beaker with an egg. They're already ready to go. I can just clean them off for you. And even. So our groups are just a table? Yeah, we're going to stay at our table today. Alright. Just to save some time. Yeah, game. <laughs> at the very end, make sure you wash your hands, please, before you go to lunch. Here's the information you're left up. Grab your eggs, head on back.
I should label the beaker with a period and a name. Well, we'll start with this. Yes. When you get the egg out, you can take measurements. Egg is semi. I'm going to say clear. Because we like to have a When you're doing your measurements, should we put that we could see the yolk? Yeah. Okay. Does it come from the tree? Oh, so. Um. When you're taking your egg measurements, so you yeah. already have one. Um, have the other person label your beaker with a period and a name, so I can get it back to you. Uh, what do you say? As far as getting it out? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody, look here. If you want to get the egg out, just kind of roll it in your hand. Gently. All right? And then you can work with it. Okay? It's really putting it back in. You want to be careful to gently roll it back in. All right. So. Okay, so if the concentration is either high or low, then something will add to us. So. so if the concentration of solute is. What unit do we use for circumference? What unit do we use for circumference? What unit do we use for circumference? Give me an idea. Yeah. So the period in anybody's name group is just to show what you get back from the car. It's the construction of the solute that goes up. Then the egg will grow larger. Okay. And is it the concentration of size increases, then the cell will grow larger. Because water, <coughs> The solute can pass through the semi permeable membrane. I like that. Because of the. Should I read the Yeah, it's like. Yeah, the high concentrations, like the membrane, like sort of absorbs the. Uh, what would actually start on the outside and it grows? Egg, beaker, don't need a scale. Uh, solutions. Write out your hypothesis and we will find out tomorrow. Lily, we hear some later. Don't have long here. There's also a scale. Yeah, egg, beaker, scale, solutions. And there's a ruler. String that we measure. Materials. How do you? Okay. Um, what else? What? Okay. Uh, Lily Rigger is like, you want to do an element pen? Pencil? Just put. Which can I put? Uh, can we put someone's name in the period? Right there. To label the beaker, do we put someone's name in the period? Just a period in one of your names is fine. Okay, so you're putting your name. Just so we can make Oh, he said no one had. Yeah. Okay. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two. Um, we just drew pieces of frame that measure those are coming from the egg. So you pay attention to the egg and measure those are coming from the egg. Hey, it's not going to be a good one. Yeah, I like this one. Okay, so I think it's. Uh, here's the screen. How do you say we do this yesterday? Keep working on it. Put it around. Yeah. Right. First, we should be around. 
Yeah. And you see, like, you, like, went, like, yeah, I don't know. And you, like, you see where I have to, like, being doubled up. Well, I found it easier. Here, hold it. Bring me a down and then you're on the surface. And just kind of, you get to hold, like, and then just simply find where it overlaps. Right. I'll let you redo it, but then you would just measure from there to there. Thank you. I heard a question. Have you done circumference? Yes. Have you done mass? Yes. You did. So when you get to the point of your adding your corn syrup, the egg is a lot less dense than the corn syrup, so it will not it will not be submerged. You only need to add enough corn syrup to get the egg to come off the beaker's bottom, and then you know you're good. Yeah, I got you. You want me to put six to ten years? Oh, we do observations. I'll put the, put the egg back in the beaker. We need to take the mud. Don't forget to yeah, we're, we're record doing. your units for me. Oh, wait, we put it in the boat? Okay, yeah, just go put it right in the boat. Make sure you if you only put a number down, then I don't know what it is, right? So do you want to see the metric system? I do. Always, please, please. Yep. Um, include your units in your answer. Eighty-four point one. Yeah, and that's really zero on that. Eighty-four point one. So what exactly is the process that allows organisms to regulate and maintain their water quality? A solution consists of a solute and solvent mixed together. Yeah, the solution and the solvent identified in the fire unit provides the solute and the solvent. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. I think it's fifteen. Okay, I agree. Ratio of water, sure. What does it, what does it mean? Thirty to thirty. Wait, no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Oh, wait, no, it's one to one. No, it's not. For inside the cell? No, outside the cell is one to one. Outside the cell is one to one. Yeah. Inside the cell is one to four. So, where would I have the most concentrated solution based on your ratios? Four to one. Right. Make together. About the ratio of water to solute. Yeah. Where would it be more concentrated in like solutions? Oh, no, it's not one to four. Yeah. It's it's one it's one. Sh oh, I did it wrong. Did you get as your ratio in the first one? Four to one. Or wait, six. So I have four molecules of what water for every one molecule of sugar. Yeah. And then on the other side, which is outside the cell, if I'm looking correctly, yeah. it's one to one, right? Yeah. So where is my solution more concentrated? Sugar on the outside. So where is it more sugary? Where is the water more sugary? Like, right? If you think about it. Oh, on the outside. Uh, on the outside. There's more sugar molecules. I've got four molecules of water for every one molecule of sugar on one side of the barrier, yeah. and then I have a one-to-one -one ratio on the other side of the barrier. Isn't this side of the barrier going to be a little bit sh more sugary? Yeah. Then I said the outside. Right? Yeah. Okay. What? Because there's more water in the inside than the outside. There's three but water the question is not asking about the water, it's asking about the solution. That's the key here. Is sometimes they ask you about what's going on with water, and that particular question I was asking what's going on with the solutions, right? Which I'm really jumping ahead to number four. You'll get there in a moment. 